You know how fast you were going? What? How fast you were going? I don't know. Ten? Eight. Be advised, this is an explicit podcast, so if you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot, turn this off before you get butt hurt and mad, start to cry, have to run to your safe space. All opinions are those of the host and his guest, and do not reflect the opinions of any government agency. Well, welcome to Motor Cop Chronicles podcast. I'm your host, Dice Man. As always, stand in in for me is Ice Pick. Oh, see, Tyler did see my little rat I added in there going into bed. Appreciate it. Uh, did if anybody notice that or not. This will be the final episode of season one, which I didn't. Even though if I make it all this way, this long, I think this is episode like 39 or 40 or something like that. Or, yeah, something. So that's about 39 or 40 weeks, which I'm surprised. So I'm glad everybody has uh, been supporting me and listening. And hopefully 2021 will be a much better year for everyone. And maybe we'll get a little bit bigger also. I hope everybody had a, a Merry Christmas and even a better New Year, like I said. Anybody get the COVID shot yet? I have uh, not had uh, the COVID shot. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. I thought I might misspoke. It was the last episode of Season 1. So, hopefully we'll be starting out on that other one. Yes, Lindsay is another rat. I love my rats. <laughs> and uh, we got to celebrate Christmas with the uh, one of the grandkids. Hopefully, uh, Ice Chip will be letting me know if... The other grandkids enjoyed their gifts, which I was supposed to find out today, but no, I haven't heard back yet, so I don't know if they liked them or not. Hopefully they did. Well, uh, oh, there is a story I've been trying to get out and mentioned it twice. The episode last week, we had a uh, little snafu, as you want to call it, or I don't know. (laughs) I'll fuck up. We had a little, we edited it together, but there was, it was actually quite a bit longer than what was put out. We had a computer issue and stuff like that, and we lost probably about 30 or 40 minutes worth of recording. And, uh, (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to try this for the third time. There was this guy. I was out working a crash. I talked about the crash with the uh, commercial size roll-off truck. The young lady that hit it. I was advised uh, a few days ago that this poor young lady is still in the hospital and may have to end up losing one of her uh, legs from the knee down. Hoping and praying that that don't happen. Chris, I, I'm glad. I'm, I'm super glad. My production engineer, executive producer, Bam, is my go-to. She mails all my stuff out like that. And I'm uh, glad you like it. Glad you're sitting here listening. And haven't forgot, you, you start an academy, if I believe, coming up. Uh, this coming up month. I'd like to know how that's going to 
going for you and stuff like that. Keep in touch and let me know for sure. But while I was out there working the afternoon at the crash scene, to write a report, some insurance uh, investigator type people showed up. And, uh, yeah, she she's in here. She's just like, just like me off camera. Oh, that's a bomb. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm old and got bad eyesight. The, uh, there's a, a, a lady and her, I guess her assistant who is a, uh, he says an engineer at LSU University. And he has a little drone out there to fly around. And I guess it's the new style, new clothing style for men. He had, he had these little short shorts on. And I told him I was going to talk about it. He said he kept, talked about it last time and he got uh, snafu'd out. But I told I looked at him in his face. I said, I don't know what's up with you and you young people with these little short shorts on. Pretty sure when he bent over, his butt cheeks hung out. You know, I'm, I'm joking on that. I don't think his butt cheeks hung out. But it was close. Um, I guess I'm just too old now. I'm going to be staying with the long shorts. I don't wear shorts often anyway. So I need to go back my fat ass to the gym. And as soon as I don't have to wear a mask in it anymore. Yes, Anastasia. She is number one. And you will not get me to disagree with that. Because I have to sleep at night and don't want to wake up taped to the bed or anything like that. I think she would do that. Jed, I appreciate it. And uh, you have a good week also. I appreciate your support also. Thanks, man. Anyway, I, t- I kept saying I was going to talk about the guy with the shorts. <laughs> and I know he probably thought I was going to forget. And uh, I haven't forgotten. It just got... Messed up. He's a good kid. Uh, engineering degree. I think he's about to uh, graduate soon. Good luck with him. Cause he's, obviously, he's obviously way smarter than me. And uh, Going to school to be an engineer. Something I doubt I would be able to do at all. Or I'm sure I could go. I'm not sure I would pass engineering school. I'm not the best, uh, best mathematician whatsoever. I was off to go to ex wanted to go to a reconstruction school at one point in my career, and I told him, no, thank you. Hey, Diane, I hope you had a good Christmas. I told them they could keep their money because it would probably be a waste if they did send me because I would probably fail on the math part. So I'm going to talk about, let's talk about this one little guy I pulled over a week or so ago. Do I take this wrong with me, okay? Uh, the guy, I walk up there and I start to, to explain to the guy while I pulled him over. Uh, he was going 12 over, which was about 72 and 60. Well, he came back, he told me, the man's death was not death. He was deaf, could not hear. You know, so he indicated this to me. I don't know sign language. I did my best to explain to him on how fast he was going and everything else. He gave me his driver's license. And I ended up, I mean, I wrote him a ticket when they ended up buying, you know, I write most everybody stop a ticket. I wrote the guy a ticket. I don't stand. Which, and I, I'm pretty sure they have a hearing in impaired license plate or something like that. I wish some people would use that so I'd be more prepared to uh, make the stop. Because during this, when I went to stop him at first, I guess, you know, a lot of people don't look in their mirrors. And he wasn't stopping quite as quick as everybody else, and I hit my siren on him. Well, if he wouldn't have noticed me and wouldn't have stopped, I'd think he was, would have thought he was trying to get away or something because, well, he can't hear the siren. And there's no way I would have heard, knew that he didn't hear a siren and just assumed he was running. So just my opinion, I think they need to put something on the back of the vehicle just to let us know, hey, this person has a hearing deficiency and to give us a heads up on it. So something don't 
you know, could go wrong with something like that because he's not going to follow commands, obviously, either because he can't hear. So that's just my opinion on that shit. I did pull over another person. Two people, well, it was, we had more people than one in the car. It was an older, it was a 1996 Chevy stepside vehicle doing 16 over, which is 70 and a six, 76 and a 60. Uh, there was no, there was no vehicles even close around this guy. Can I hit him with the LIDAR? Well, he wasn't uh, fluent in English at all. Thank goodness his passenger was fluid in English. Not perfect, but enough where we could talk back and forth and communicate easily. Well, anyway, the guy that don't talk in English was, of course, you know, we're using her as a translator. I'm assuming his wife, girlfriend, or whatever she was. Well, the first excuse I get is that he was following along with traffic. Well, you can't follow around on traffic when there's no fucking traffic around you, obviously. The next excuse he gave me was the speedometer was broken. Then I gave him back. I was like, well, they have apps for that, which they do. You can download an app on Android, Apple, whatever you want. That's a mile per hour app, and it'll tell you how fast you're going, and believe it or not, they're very accurate. I go back, write him his ticket, bring him back to him, give him the same spiel. Well, now he's pissed off. And you can tell he is pissed off. I'm like, I got this man pissed off, trying to have a conversation with him because we can't understand each other. Because every time he gave me an excuse, <clears throat> I gave him an answer. I just thought it was a little ironic that I was having to have a, a discussion through his wife or girlfriend as our interpreter, and he was starting to get an attitude about it. But at least it did make it easy to cut the conversation short because we couldn't understand what the fuck either one of us was saying, obviously. So, no excuses on speedometers broken. There's just no excuse for it, especially with the electronics and all the technology we have out there nowadays. I mean, come on, stop stop giving us excuses, right? That's how I feel about it. Anyway, I'm trying to remember which stories I've talked about and which ones I hadn't. I didn't really have a... Uh, Believe it or not, I tried. I played it nice last week, pretty much. I did go out and write tickets one day, and believe it or not, it was totally, totally uneventful. I didn't have one rude person on, uh, I think it was last Monday or something like that, which is quite strange to have a complete whole day with no, not not one rude person at all. Well, we're going to listen. You're going to listen to this shit next because <laughs> I like fucked up big time. And I felt like the dumbest, stupidest motherfucker I have felt in a very, very long time. I was out writing tickets. I think it was Tuesday. You know, being the Grinch, writing people tickets right before Christmas. Well, Karma decided. She didn't like that. And as we discussed before, karma is a bitch. And karma will raise her head up every now and then and bitch slap you right across the face. But anyway, we're going to talk about how karma did get me on this day. Start writing the tickets. I, I think I'd, I'd been out for a little while. And uh, I had to think I made my third or fourth stop. And as I was finishing the ticket up, this car uh, come rolling up behind me on the shoulder of the interstate, which, as anybody in law enforcement knows, that's not a good thing or a safe thing. And I actually got seven people with you, which still isn't a good or safe thing, but I'm just trying to give my bearings here. I'm not traveling by myself. I'm like, okay. So I'm 
trying to watch him and watch these people now that rolled up behind me in this other car. So I to, gave him his citation, explain it to him. He leaves. Tell me he leaves. Well, as I'm going back, back up, my normal routine is, you know, when I'm working in the state, a lot of times I'm in my unit. To get my unit, you know, I'll move my citations around and get ready for the next one. Well, I couldn't do that. I walked back, and I didn't want to have this citation book in my hand confronting these unknown people, which I have no clue why they stop. It could be, you know, most of the time, most of the time, it can be. It, it's going to be something non-eventful. They need help. They need direction. Something like that. But you also have the times where, especially in today's times, people will. You don't know somebody's going to try to ambush you, or or what the hell. So I laid the ticket book down in the back. I know I have a, a my unit, not my motorcycle. My unit is a truck. I, I laid the ticket book down on the toolbox on the back of it as I was walking past because I didn't want to have either one of my hands encumbered by anything. And I couldn't tell how many people or who was in this vehicle. Anyway, I made made my approach up to it. Well, come to find out it was a, it was a couple with some of their kids in there, their vehicle. He said it just stopped running, and they had basically coasted up, saw me, coasted up to me on the shoulder. The vehicle had broke down. It would... It wouldn't crank or nothing like that. I don't know if it was the alternator or, or what happened. I'm so far from being a fucking mechanic. It's ridiculous. I'm I'm mechanically declined. I will tell people that all the time. You don't want me working on nothing. So I, I find out what's going on. I call it in the dispatch. I let them know what, what, around what mile marker we were at give him the license plate and everything else. The people said he did have his own roadside assistance. He was calling. I advised, I gave him a card, has the office phone number on it, and told him, you know, if, they, if something happened or anything else, to call. We get somebody out there to assist them, so forth. So I did all, all of this. Well, I get back in my unit, and I go to leave because I'm going to go, Attempt to write some more tickets, just not right there on top of them. Well, I pull off, and I hear something, and I look back, and the first thing out of my mouth was, oh, shit. Pretty sure I said it out loud, too. As I see all my tickets exploding into just exploding into the air like a fucking confetti cannon just went off because my dumb ass forgot my ticket book on the back of that toolbox of the unit. And not it, it didn't only have the three or four I had written. It had the day before citations in there also, which I think was around 10. And as it, I saw it, an 18-wheeler come up behind it, and like I said, there was... There were just tickets everywhere, like, just fucking just confetti. I mean, it looked like a holiday party. I'm like, fuck. Get back on the shoulder, activate my lights, back up slowly on the shoulder, and I end up retrieving, mm, let's see, it was about 14 tickets. I think I retrieved about six or seven of them. Now, I'm on the elevated interstate area where the ground well it's not even ground it's water underneath here and if you look down it's probably about 30 good 30 feet down or so well i could see some down there so i retrieved what i could and put them in my ticket book uh cussed at myself a whole fucking lot calling myself name and decided to call it a day drove my ass home Called Bam, said I'm coming home. She's like, Oh, you're so early. I'm like, Yeah, I feel like a dumbass. So, drove my ass home. The next day, I had to go into the office and explain to the captain and major how there's seven or eight citations out there that we I can't account for now. At least I knew which my number, there's a red number on our, our tickets out here. At most, I think in Louisiana, unless you're on digital. And 
I, I'm pretty sure I got all those numbers written down and gave them the pieces of it. I mean, at least my administration people were, you know, very understanding about it. The accidents do happen and everything. But what the fuck? I went to bed pissed off at myself. I woke up the next morning pissed off at myself. And so, yeah, that was my probably the most biggest fuck up I've done in, I don't know, 20 something years. I've never just lost a shitload of tickets like that before because, you know, I got out of my routine and fucking forgot what I had done and left that ticket book right there. So, yep, that that was my big fuck up for the day. Did he utilize that number? Oh, the guy that broke down? I am not sure. Oh, he did. Okay. I'm, I got confused there. I was in my own mind, Dan. Oh, well, I tried to explain to him how that, uh, you know, everybody loves saying they have AAA or paying for that extra service or stuff. A lot of people don't realize that it they, they'll take three or four hours or longer sometimes to show up. I seen somebody call one time, and they called the record service to come help the people. That was like, you know, an hour and a half, two hours away. It's like, when they have one ten minutes up the fucking road, I have no clue of why they do that. Oh, did he say that my citations blew up? No, I did not write <laughs> write. More citations the next day, Anastasia. Uh, the next day, I think, was uh, the day before Christmas Eve. And uh, my boss was nice enough that we got got off half a day that day. And I figured karma bitch slapped me the day before hard enough for being a Grinch out there writing people tickets on their way to Grandma's house that I was going to give it a break until after Christmas. Now, tomorrow is Monday. Uh it's still up in the air if the Iceman is going to be out spreading some pre-New Year's Eve joy or, or not. I mean, y'all, everybody knows I love giving out driving awards. And, you know, it's and it's not about just the money or nothing like that or trying to hurt people or nothing like that. Uh, speeding kills people. And, you know, as much as somebody might get pissed off when I stop them and give them a ticket, there may be that one a chance, one in a million chance. You will never find out. Thank God that if I wouldn't stop them from speeding, that we didn't go up the road a little while, and you could have gotten a crash. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but I, I told the guy. I mean, so I'm sure y'all had to send another unit out there. You don't know that Anastasia, I'm you 99.9%. It depends on how I'm feeling tomorrow. I might be feeling, you know, all Christmassy still. Of course, you know, we didn't even put up a tree this year, so <laughs> I don't know how Christmassy I will feel going, doing that. Oh, I did, did stop this other person, not this day. This was the week before. I just had, uh, when I had Officer 2D on and, uh, you know, Matt, the one that, the survivor that got shot in the face, which I will have back on because he did talk about some stuff on there that we lost. And uh, like I said, Matt survived getting shot in the face. I mean, he'll, he can come on as much as he wants to. I mean, I got a lot of respect for that guy. I'm hoping to get his partner that was on here also. Uh, I think Matt did tell me he got in uh, touch with him. And I believe he is interested. Yes, that is true, and I'm hoping I, that we get off another half of the day and get get a only a three day work week this uh this coming up week also. Christmas time is always good for getting days off sometimes, unless you're in a uh, UP uniform patrol. Them guys, man, I remember my years in that working plenty Christmases and and just I missed a lot of Christmases and birthdays and holidays with my family and stuff through 20 something years of this uh working on weekends and it's just not uniform patrol it's the dispatchers 911 operators firemen uh 
people don't appreciate all all them first responders out there, including doctors and nurses, that don't get off for holidays and holidays don't mean shit to them. And uh, so all you people that are off out there and stuff, you need to uh, appreciate that, that you do get off of holidays when, you, you know, a lot of people don't think about them cops and firemen and all them other first responders, dispatchers and stuff that are out there, you know, coming to work on holidays, missing out on their family stuff when, uh, when nobody, uh, when they're working and everybody else is at home enjoying their dinners and stuff like that. So, yes, Chris, most motor cops do have different hours, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was Pam showing me something. As y'all saw on the camera, so it's about a ten second delay. Yes, Chris. Mo most motor units, uh, now they do have several. Most motor units are eight hours. Uh, a lot of them are five days a week, just Monday through Friday. The two departments I've worked for in my career, we uh, have both been eight hours. I used to my old department. I used to work six a.m. to two p.m department I work for now we work from 7 a.m to 3 p.m which is it's phenomenal great fucking hour that's a lot of times why a lot of people want to get in motors and uh it's for the hours i'm, I'm lucky i get to work for monday through friday five days a week uh weekends and holidays off i mean it, it's a it's a good deal uh, i've known a couple departments some of them will have four tens and uh there's only uh very few that that I've ever heard of that work twelve hour shifts on motors. They they have them, but there's not many of them. It's, it's dangerous. I mean, you spend that long on a motorcycle during the day. I mean, it wears the hell out of you, especially that, that when it's extremely hot or it's extremely cold. I find the cold actually wears me out more than the heat does. I did learn through the years that uh, when I used to get home, when I get home. And it's hundred, you know, hundred degree in the heat index or higher. When I first get home off the motorcycle, I will not walk inside directly. When I get home, I'll stand outside for about ten minutes or so in the shade or something, letting my body temperature cool down. Because I found out when I went directly inside to get cooled off from the motorcycle, and, and you're in the shirt. I mean, I have salt rings on me and stuff from from just just the sweat all day from the heat. My body temperature would drop so fast from the air conditioning, it would actually make me nauseated and not end up, you know, throwing up or something like that. So, yeah, I, I can give I can give driving awards all day, every day, everywhere, uh, Jennifer. Like, that's one thing there's not a lack of in the world for some reason is speeders. And everybody's always in a hurry to get somewheres. Like I said, I asked them that Walmart's not going to run out of nothing unless it's toilet paper, but I think they got that solved now, too. I've never, I haven't yet to figure that out at all with the toilet paper deal. I tell this little story. It's happened on the 17th of this month. I pull over a guy. I don't believe I told this story. I can't remember, but I'm going to tell it again. Anyway, I pulled this guy over for speeding. Uh, I didn't write the speed down, but obviously he was 11 plus over. But the reason he gave for me for speeding was he smelled something in the back of his vehicle. Now, he did he had to have two German Shepherds in his vehicle. And I'm like, okay, he smelled something. Well, I think he, he was speeding kind of get somewhere. It's like I said, it's an elevated uh, interstate. Cause I, th I think he thought one of his dogs took a shit or something in the back of his vehicle. I, I kind of glanced back there, and I didn't see no shit. And while we were there, when I came back with his citation, and uh, he's like, see, oh, my God. I said, your dog's got gas. Your dog's a farting. That's all they're doing, you know. They're farting. So he got his ticket. This guy, he, he was from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm like, where's the New York accent, buddy? I mean, if I'm going to pull somebody from New York, at least I want to hear the New York accent. I didn't even get the fucking New York accent. Nope. I got 
a uh, different accent because the guy was originally from Puerto Rico. Got his ticket. I told him where he could go to let his dogs walk in case he had to shit. But your dog's farting. It's not a good excuse to get out of a ticket at all. Yeah, I, I I know Randy, I know, I know, you know, I know your husband pretty good, and uh, he is he retiring just out of motors, or is he retiring from just period from from law enforcement? What's up, Casey? But yeah, I know. I mean, I've I've got my times coming in soon. A lot of people think I'm still crazy. I'll be fifty in February. And I started motors in like, I don't know, 99 or 2000, somewhere. I, mean, I have to find the exact date. It all just runs fucking together now. And some of us know. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to hate to see y'all go. I hope y'all will still come to competitions and stuff and have something to do with that once this Rona stuff gets out of there and we can actually get back to the competition stuff. And it's. As y'all know, it's not about the competitions for me. It's I, I just because I ain't gonna win shit. I ain't no no way good enough to win against uh, a lot of them guys out there. Randy's husband being one of them. Remember when he won Mister Radio one year and stuff? I'm a mediocre rider compared to them guys, but I do love all the the fellowship with everybody and everything. See, Jennifer says cops here also have a choice of using their personal vehicle. So you're saying they, they they can use their personal vehicles to pull people over in? I don't know if I would do that. I mean, I don't know if I'd fucking stop for a fucking Volvo station wagon or something like that. Yeah, oh, I'm glad about that, Randy. I'm just going to hate to see both of y'all go. My, my retirement's coming up soon. Maybe. It depends. Depends on if I can figure out what I'm going to do after this. We've all been cops for so long. We just, I mean, what the fuck you do when you... You hang that badge up. I was talking about that in the last podcast. I mean, it's it's almost kind of like a little scary or something. It's giving up so much part of your life that we're eventually going to have to give up, especially in today's world on how everything's going and shit like that. It's ridiculous. I'm trying to find this new story that I did uh, look up, and I had it pulled up. And I keep losing my shit. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be pulling over for somebody. I mean, that 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 could just cause all kind of shit. I could just see myself trying to pull somebody over my personal car or my bus. I have a bus we take our dogs around in, a big black bus. I'd love to see somebody be trying to pull somebody over in a handicap bus. That would be fucking weird. All right, this ain't a super new story. This I had read it and forgot to talk about it on a few other podcasts. It happened on the 15th of this year. This is out of, uh, off of Newsweek. It says a man died trying to burglarize a home after the window slammed down on him. So the, of course, it's out of Florida. All kind of crazy shit's always coming out of Florida. Yeah, pull him over in a slingshot. That They're fun to drive. It's just I'm not real quick on getting out of there either. <laughs> My big ass. Anyway, a Florida man died while attempting to burglarize a home after a window slammed down on him. Authorities said Jonathan Hernandez, 32, was trying to break into a home on 46th Street. I don't know if this is called on in Lehigh or Lee Acres. And He was trying. He said he was trying to work his way through the window, and the window unexpectedly, unexpectedly closed on top of him, pinning him in and keeping him suspended in the air. Lieutenant Russell Park, a spokesman for the sheriff's office, said in a video posted on Facebook Monday, Hernandez was found dead by deputies who arrived on the scene. Park said, "Detectives with the sheriff's office, Major Crimes Unit." have taken over the investigation into Hernandez's death park added. According to WBBH TV, an incident report was the incident report said his neck had been caught in the window. But his family and friends told the station that they believe there is more to the story. 
Hernandez's fiance, Patricia, however you say her last name, said she doubted the version of events presented by authorities after seeing the residents in question. Soon as I get there, I'm like, there's no way this isn't what happened, she said. I need a proper investigation. I need the actual truth to come to light. Tyson Lane added, he is not a burglar. He's not a thief. He's not a bad guy. That's not what he is. Durant added that when she first met Hernandez, she thought he looked like he has a rap sheet like El Chapo. He's the complete opposite of that, she said. He's the sweetest person you'd probably ever meet in the biggest heart. How's all these motherfuckers always get either shot, killed, or something happened to them? Every one of them are complete angels that go to church and the sweetest motherfuckers you ever met. I wish one time, one fucking time, somebody would actually stand up and say, yeah, I told that dumbass he didn't stop that shit. He was going to end up in jail. Uh, Park described Hernandez as a convicted felon and said he was no stranger to law enforcement. He was arrested over his involvement in a murder in a case in 2014, and but there was no further details provided on that. He was also charged in fatal shooting of a man during a drug deal alongside two others. The outcome of that case was not immediately clear. Then uh Online records show Hernandez, who was also known as Jonathan Hernandez Zolgea, had multiple arrests dating all the way back to 2007. They include arrests for larceny, grand theft, violating probation, and marijuana possession. The sheriff's, had, the sheriff's office had been contacted for further info, but no more is available. Well, what were we talking about earlier? Miss Karma? Yeah, well, that, Chris, that fucking scene there. I mean, but I I just love it how the family members always come out and say, Oh, my poor little baby. He's he's a good Christian boy. Okay, I saw the picture of the dude. And he looked like a thug. And it's just, uh-uh. Nope, nope. Uh, I mean, in the course, like I said, the family always does that. I mean, the fucker's head got caught in the window. That was karma, slamming the window down on him. And he probably got himself hung up and didn't do it and ended up hanging himself by the window. Bye-bye, bag. I, I'm sorry. I just, like I said, man, I'm an asshole, man. I'm not. That's karma. Karma happens. She is out there, people. Watch out for her. Sometimes she wears a turtleneck. Sometimes she might have a, a muscle shirt on or a wife beater with no bra. So watch out for her. She will get you. She will slap you. She will fuck you up. Like I said, I was out being a Grinch, writing tickets right before Christmas when I didn't have to be just because I like writing tickets. And there she went, come and slap me. There she goes, your tickets all down the fucking interstate. Go explain that to the bosses. So that's the new story for this week. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully everybody had a good Christmas. Hopefully everybody has a happy new year. Hopefully this coming up year 2021 is a whole lot fucking better than this 2020 crap has been. Because, like I said, I'm going to get me a pin to wear my uniform and say I survived 2020. Have some of them made or something. I mean, fuck. It's been a hell of a year. Hopefully some shit starts opening back up. Especially for these bar owners and, and all these restaurants and stuff like that. Uh, there's a there's a bar me and Freebird like to go to. They have karaoke. Even though I don't karaoke, cause people would probably pay me to get off the stage. I cannot sing. And but we like to go out, hang out, drink, and watch other people sing. Some good, some bad. And I like giving people nicknames. Uh, remember, uh, get your peanut butter whiskey from Old Smokey and. Get your crayon grape juice. Oh, I will do this. Let me throw this out there before I forget because I'm old. The insurance investigator lady had told me about it. And get the old smoky peanut butter whiskey I'm always raving about. Yeah, you're right, Randy. We do all need that. Get the old smoky peanut butter whiskey I'm always raving about. Get your shot glass. This is how I did it anyway. 
put about half of it of the old smoky peanut butter whiskey, and then I took the Godiva chocolate liqueur, put it in the freezer for like two days, pulled it out, and I mixed it, the other half in a shot glass. That shit sm- tastes like you were taking a shot of a Reese's peanut butter cup. Bam liked it until she, a little alcohol hit, hit her a little bit, but it's not a bad hit. But it's like shooting a Reese's peanut butter cup. Get you some and try it. You won't be disappointed. Also, don't forget to look us up or email me at motorcopchronicles at gmail.com or on Facebook, Motor Cop Chronicles Podcast. We are uh, on Parlor at Motor Cop Chronicles Podcast. I'm on Twitter at Motor C, and we're also on YouTube now. Hit us up. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting some T-shirts before long. Uh, I have mailed out some stickers uh, to some people that have uh, emailed me. Uh, I think we still have some left. I'm not sure. Chris, I'm gonna. I'm not missing a lick. I'm not taking a break or anything. Just I don't know how a lot of. Uh, I don't I don't know how a lot of other people do it, how they have like all these seasons. I'm just doing a season per year. I'm not gonna uh next week, ne- next Sunday I'll have another one out. I don't know if I'll be going live Saturday or Sunday. It's still hit or miss for me. Uh but no, I'm not taking a break or nothing. I'm just chugging along. I haven't missed I haven't missed one week yet in uh since I started, which is just easy thirty nine or forty. So I know I not, not all of my episodes are that good, but you got to give me a break. I mean, sometimes they're going to they're gonna be good. Sometimes I'm probably just going to suck. But I, I'm not I'm not taking a break. I'm going to try to start doing the, the live stuff with Ice Chip here since I'm anonymous and do like this because I like being able to interact with people. Why do always meth heads have sex toys in their cars and bags? <laughs> Only reason I can think of is, is I guess being high makes you horny or something. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's true. Every one of them do. You're gonna have it. We were searching a vehicle to get, not too long ago. And I'm like, make sure you put your gloves on because you never know what you're gonna find under the seat. But I guess, I guess you get high and get horny. That that's that's the only thing I can figure. <laughs> you get out of academy, you better remember that when you you're searching a fucking vehicle pull out a big old dildo or something and you know it's probably been used and nasty or something like that always wear your gloves buddy but everybody i appreciate y'all coming on uh hey this is like my hobby and it's extremely fun and uh i hope y'all keep listening and supporting me if you listen on apple Podcasts, go hit that five stars write me a good review and uh Y'all always remember to smile because the Ice Man could always be behind you. I'm cranking up on the throttle. This is how legends are made.